good to be talking about some good news. It was glorious to see the return of Catherine, Princess of Wales today, at Trooping the Colour. And it just made me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. And do you want to know why it made me feel all warm and fuzzy inside? It's because it's nice to see a story about cancer which doesn't, inv which doesn't end up in someone who is seriously ill or someone who is dying. Cancer has affected my family in the last 12 months' time. I've had a very close family friend of mine die of cancer. And it's nice to see the Princess of Wales out today fulfilling her duty to this country and to her family, even though she's battling this awful disease. And I think it just gives all those people and all those families who have been impacted by cancer recently, in the recent past, or perhaps in the distant past, some hope and optimism in what can be really dark and trying for many people. Dr Renee, you are, of course, a doctor. I called you Dr Renee there. You know, as well as I do, that about 460 people in Britain die of cancer each day. The Princess of Wales, out at Trooping the Colour today, is going to give people hope, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, it really will give them hope. And I think the nice thing about Catherine and what she's done this week is in her personal note that she wrote, she admitted that there were some days where she felt really good, but there were other days where she just felt like resting and staying in bed and she didn't feel so good. And I think that was really real because people who are suffering from cancer will know those days. So they're not just seeing it totally rosy. I think she's done a wonderful thing and I think people will take hope from everything that's happened this week and her appearance today. Darren, do you were you at all worried that maybe she had stepped back into royal duties too quickly? I think there was certainly pressure applied, you know, the, the, the tabloids and the fact that people were saying that there was some conspiracy when she was seen at the Windsor um, Garden Show, wasn't it, <clears throat> that she was clocked at? And they were saying, well, hang on, I don't think that was actually her. And they, yeah. so, all these rumours going around that it was a... a body double. I think uh, there has definitely been pressure applied on her to appear. But also, uh, of course, let's not forget that His Majesty the King has cancer too. And I think there has been pressure applied there because the King has been doing some duties too, albeit on GP advice saying, mm. you know, what he can and cannot do or, or what he's advised to not do. Uh, so I think there has certainly been pressure there. But I think she does fundamentally feel an attachment to what took place today mm. because, of course, she, she was made Colonel of the Guard, wasn't she? So it, it is something that is profoundly important to her and the, uh, she feels a deep sense of service. And I think that was evident today. I just hope she's not overdoing it, you know? I hope mm -hmm. she genuinely is feeling up to it. Benjamin, what was your takeaway from today's events? Uh, well, I mean, I love Trooping the Colour. I saw the red arrows go over my house, which is incredibly oh, wow. exciting around lunchtime. I thought we were under attack or something. Where do you live? Buckingham, do you live in Buckingham Palace? You know, I, I live in West London, so <laughs> it goes that way. Um, but, you know, I think this will bring a lot of hope to people for the very reason that you set out, that there will be an enormous number of people who are in a similar position to her at the moment with cancer. And to tell that story, that they can still go out there and do things and feel joy. And, and you can only imagine, I imagine, as a GP, you might come across this, but hopefully it gave her a lot of of hope in a moment like mm -hmm. this, because it, it must be pretty lonely, pretty isolating. You know, someone who has, uh, you know, an incredibly public life for mm -hmm. the past best part of 20 mm -hmm. years, who now will have a very small life while she battles this condition. Uh, and so I was, you know, I was incredibly uplifted to see it this afternoon. It's quite powerful, isn't it, Alex, that we have the royal family being so open about their cancer diagnoses. It was only a couple of generations ago that His Majesty King George died of cancer, but initially he didn't even know he had cancer because the doctors didn't tell him about it. Whereas now we have two senior royals actually being public about their illnesses and really bringing the public along with them. It's quite powerful, don't you think? Yeah, it is. And I obviously remember the front pages after both of King Charles's diagnosis and the Princess of Wales, and it spurred perhaps hundreds of thousands of people to go and get checked, mm. which I think may have saved some lives. And I think actually the reports were that it did possibly save lives. Mm. So it's an extremely powerful message from such a private family. I think it signals this new modern royal family. It signals a changing of their approach. And I'm really pleased that Kate's come out today. I think it's put to bed 
all those nasty trolls. And I know we saw some trolls just again the other day mm. putting out these ridiculous statements about her picture in the woods where she had that, that really beautiful photo of her saying, oh, it's been photoshopped again. So for her to come out today, be seen well, being seen as well, being seen happy with her children as well, I think has really, really set the tone. Yeah. And I'm so glad she looks stunning. She looks beautiful. She does, and she's so brave. But Dr Renee, there's some statistics and data to show us actually cancer outcomes in this country are getting poorer yes. in the 21st century, or at least the most recent part of the 21st century than before. Why do you think that's happening? So I think it's a combination of things. I think it's lack of awareness because people have been locked up for three years under COVID and lots of health messages just got lost in there that actually should be at the forefront of people's minds. People were worried about coming forward. We're actually getting unhealthier as a nation because our food is mainly ultra processed now for lots of people's diets, which we know causes, ob causes obesity and causes cancer. And I I also think our wait times in the NHS are still below par when you compare us to the rest of the world and it's actually getting to it early that is the best treatment for cancer. So I think it's multifactorial, there are lots of things at play but I do think we need to encourage people to take more responsibility for their health, come forward when they're worried, even if they think it's silly, it doesn't matter. Mm. If it's silly we'll check it and then that will be the end of it. So let's come forward to their GPs. Yeah, Alright, thank you very much for that.